everyone, welcome back to the Time Capsule Show podcast, where we tell stories of the 21st century through six questions as you reflect on the past, connect with the present, and explore the future. I'm John Ruse. And I'm Jerenz. And today, we have an OG YouTuber who you for sure recognize from her challenges, like the cinnamon challenge and her signature green lips. Please welcome Glowzell. We are so ah! glad to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, this is Glowzell. Is you okay? Is you good? Because I want to know. Hey, <laughs> are y'all in the closet? In the closet? Yeah. Look inside a closet? Yeah. No, we're oh, in our bedroom. Room. <laughs> I'm in my bedroom too. <laughs> it's the best place to film from. <laughs> Does yeah. it look like we're in a closet? <laughs> well, there's like a door or something. I thought maybe that was the door to close the closet. I'm like, a lot, you know, oh. I do a lot of voiceovers oh, in the closet. So I was like, maybe they're in the closet. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's like a closet. <laughs> <like clothes. laughs> Excellent. But actually, Thank I've, you for having me. Of yeah, of course. We're so happy to have you. But before we start with one of the questions, I actually have a really important question for you. Is you okay? Is you? <laughs> I really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I am good. <laughs> yes, I am good. Thank you for asking. You know, a lot of people don't ask. I think maybe three people have asked, you know, like in over 10 years. I'm like, okay. So, yes, I is good. Good. We're all good oh, today. That's great. Good. <laughs> Yay. We all worked out, everybody. Is this something that people see or they just hear? Oh, no. They can also, yeah, it's both. Glad I put on my good weave today. <laughs> <laughs> you look fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so um, everyone pretty much knows who you are, but can you tell us, um, I guess, tell us about your career as a YouTuber? How did you get started? Like, what, what inspired you to get started with it? Okay, so I started off doing blogs and blogs, and then I, I copied and pasted everything on YouTube. And then um, from there, my audience grew on YouTube, and then I, I just kind of left the blog and vlog away because I'm like, there's 10 people watching me on my blog, but there's millions of people who are watching me on this YouTube thing. So um, once I realized that was real, I kept up with that. And it was very, very early on. Where did you get your inspiration for your videos? They're, I got to say, they're hilarious. <laughs> I, I, right before this interview, I was watching one about, like, did you fart or is that your breath? And I was <laughs> laughing and I'm like, oh my God, this is hilarious. Where do you get your inspiration from? Okay, my inspiration really comes from, like, things that really happen. And so this guy was talking to me. I'm like, is that your breath or did you just fart? Like, I was really confused. And I like it. And then I'm like, that is a song. Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Is that your breath? Oh, did you just break it down? Is that your pop? Oh, did you just? <laughs> <It's like water. laughs> you know, things that were happening. Um, the Cinnamon Challenge was the first video that I did that wasn't my own, that like other people had done before. Because I was like, I, I, you know, there's plenty of things to talk about in my life. I don't have to do something someone else did. So if someone else did it, then I thought maybe I'll just do it bigger, you know, different. And oh my goodness, I almost died. Yeah, almost died. Yeah, you used a big ladle for that one. <laughs> yes, because I was like, what's, you know, I didn't know that cinnamon was dangerous. You know, I thought it was going to be sweet for some reason. But once you have it in your mouth and has so much, it turned to like a paste. And then I started laughing and crying because I'm like, this is literally how I'm going to die, you know, <laughs> because I'm like, I can't breathe. And then the cinnamon everywhere and I'm going to the refrigerator. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I really was panicking. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I had to get the cinnamon down. And later on, I'm, I'm hallucinating. Like I'm like out of it. And I had to vacuum up all the cinnamon and the cinnamon clogged up the vacuum. That's when I realized like, oh my God. I really could have died. And people have died doing that cinnamon challenge, but I, I it is crazy. And I'm the reason why that most coffee shops don't have cinnamon out. They used to just have cinnamon out so you put on your little drinks or whatever, Starbucks, everything like, Arr! because people like, Glowzell did it, and oh, baby, just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to know what it feels like to try it. I've never done it myself, but I heard it gets stuck in there and like, like you said, it becomes a paste. Yes, it like turned into like this paste, this cake, and I'm like, oh, I see where the challenge comes in, yeah. Yeah, I'm dying time. right now and I'm filming myself. Oh gosh. And I'm like, ah, you can see your eyes burning. And my throat has always been affected by that. You know? Yeah. So I burnt, I was on the show, the doctors, 
Dr. Drew, because I burned my esophagus. They put a camera down there. Oh and even now, after a while, my voice will go, <sighs> get rest because I burned it up doing cinnamon. So I probably right. shouldn't try it right after this interview. I'm thinking you shouldn't try it right okay. after this interview or ever. <laughs> Never, <laughs> ever. Never, ever. And if you do, please don't do, uh, you know, a whole ladle. You know, I'll do it with sugar, so I'm sure it's sweet. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, Glozell, imagine there wasn't a world with YouTube. Imagine that you weren't a content creator. What do you think you'd be doing with your life? I still would be creating because uh, I would be um, doing my best to hopefully be on some kind of show, theater, that kind of a thing. Like, I just can't get out of doing that. But that's just what I do. YouTube happened to be a vehicle that I could just put. I was like, oh, I'll just put my ideas here. Not knowing that YouTube would be as big as it is now. and um, that people will know you from YouTube. I just thought I'll just put my ideas there and that's fine. And because I would write, you know, you write things and you lose the notebook and everything. I'm like, oh, okay, it's right there. And that's why I think that I'll still be definitely the, uh, maybe teaching theater. I could do that, but something that's creative and fun like that where we get to play. I'm just a big kid. I want to play all the time. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so would you go into acting or were you an actress at some point in your youth was i an actress at some time in my youth yes and i also have a college degree from the university of florida go gators i have a bfa uh um, bachelor's of fine art in musical theater so definitely along that that route of acting and i have an agent now and been doing auditions you know, so now that everything is opening up, where are you two? What We're in New York. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're in New York. So y'all never did close down, really. Did kind of. It was scary. Like, Times Square was literally empty. It was yeah. like a ghost town, something straight out of a zombie movie. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. I bet. I bet. How about you? You're in California, right? We're in California. That was a time when they said lockdown. There was nobody on the roads and everything. But now everything's opened up. And who knows what they're going to do with this new variants and there's another variant you know so we'll see never ends but what never did you do <laughs> what did you do during the pandemic to keep yourself busy and to keep creating what did i do during the pandemic during the pandemic to keep myself creative well um i have a four-year-old so you know you have to be creative like okay we're gonna paint like we'll paint today and then you realize well she's done you got the rest of the day you got to come up with something so you're always creating like, okay, now we're going to do puppets and now we'll build a fort. And so it's on and on and on and on going where you have, I'm used to having to do several things, but um, yeah. You, and then there's times where like, okay, I give up, enjoy the iPad. I got to lay down. So, you know, you, you, you do what you can. Everything was closed, including the parks. Couldn't go to church. You know, there was no, like, you, you can't only zoom so much. You know, but out of that, that's when you're writing. That's when you have to get creative because you, you've got to live, survive, and entertain yourself. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right, so just really quickly, like, my dog is barking like crazy for some reason. Do you mind if I just, like, leave for just, like, a few minutes? No, what kind of interview? <laughs> Go ahead. Because, like, the construction workers that just started before this interview, I'm like, oh, my goodness, so I understand. I want to see the dog. Bring the dog back. See, that doesn't look, like, look like a closet. Yeah, I don't know why he's barking downstairs, but he seems really excited. I'm sorry about this, Lozelle. I, I hope you don't edit it out. I just want everyone, <laughs> for all of us to just pause. It's all natural. <laughs> and wait and find out what is happening with the dog. Yes, the dog. I think he's just hungry. He always wants to eat. He's a big <laughs> eat. Eat him everything from McDonald's to Burger King. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, which one does the dog prefer? McDonald's or Burger King? All of the above. He literally <laughs> like he does not care. Do you have any? My, I do not. I would love to have my daughter wants a cat, which would probably be the easiest, but I would love to have a dog. So one day, but I'm like, maybe a little dog, but I'm like, because it doesn't rain here hardly, but it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, LA's pretty dry for the most part, right? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that a Shih Tzu? No way. Is that, is that a Shih Tzu? It's a That's my favorite dog. That's the dog I want. Oh, my goodness. That's my dog. Oh, my. 
goodness. I guess he'll be joining us on this interview. Yeah. Yes. What's your doggy's name? Oh, his name's uh, Spencer. 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 That that is the dog that I want. A black and white shirt. That is it. I'm so day made. We'll I just feel like it was a sign. <laughs> we'll a set him sign. To the box. Maybe he'll get there to you by tomorrow. <laughs> Yay, Spencer! I had a dog just like this. His name was Zelman. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I love, love, love. Oh, get your friendship. Okay. Cool. Now, what were you barking at, man? You uh, you wanted some Burger King? Or something? I think he wanted to see you. He probably knew we were I talking so. to you. And he said, hey, why didn't they bring me with the... Yes, I want a dog just like that. I had a dog just like that, and I want another one. So that's so great. Yay! Yeah, so yeah especially when they like... <laughs> All right, so we're now at the segment of the show that we like to call Past, Present, and Future, where we're going okay. to be exploring three different periods of your life. So let's let's start with the let's start with the past. Actually, you know what? Let's start with the present. How do you see yourself today? How do I see myself today? I see myself definitely as a mother. So that's different than um it gets to add on to uh videos because now she can be a part of it. So I see myself now as just as silly as before, but I have more range. I have more maturity. <laughs> I have more things to talk about and make funny, you know, and reach a, a broader, I mean, a bigger audience. And speaking of things you want to talk about, you started a podcast this year, right? Yes, I started a podcast. I want to know how long your podcast has been going on. Since January. Yeah. Oh, good. Good, good, good. <laughs> so, yes, I, I started and then um, uh, it's, it's paused and then I'm like, okay, it's time to start up again. So yeah, podcast is really, I like it, you know, you, it's, you don't, it doesn't take a whole lot to set up and then, you know, people like to talk, especially during these times. We all got something crazy to talk about. Definitely. What's the craziest thing you've talked about on your show? The craziest thing I've talked about is definitely like some of the crazy challenges that I've done. And um, it's also crazy that uh, I've, I have a kid who was like, and then I'm not gonna go into it, but it was like someone else birthed the kid, but she's biologically mine, and people don't quite understand that 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 this wonderful white woman carried this black child, like it's just like this whole thing. So that it's like to to educate people on um, surrogacy. So that has been pretty wild, and um, just like I also shaved my hair this year. I shaved my head, and I'm like, oh, uh, so that's why I was like, where's my where's my good hair? For this show, I put on my good hair for this show. Let oh, there we go. <laughs> there it is. There we go. I just talk different when I. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's hot, and I uh, had it weaved and colored. I'm like, oh, okay, that that is costing too much for that, you know. Especially when it's not wasn't that much work coming in these last couple of, this last year, really, for everybody. I'm like, oh, I'm not spending money on that. I'll just cut it off. So there we go. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Like, especially during this pandemic, there's just like, there was a point during the pandemic where I was just like, why do I even feel the need to get dressed or go outside? Like, I'm basically going to be in my pajamas all the that time. That part. <laughs> that's so true. I'm so glad you said that because I'm like, why am I getting dressed to drop my daughter off? Like, that's all I'm doing. I'm dropping her off at school. I'm picking her up. Uh, there's so many moms that are dressed and their hair done and nails done. I'm like, it is hot. And I'm only getting out for a second. But, and they're like, why are you wearing a jacket all the time? It's 900 degrees. Cause I'm like, I'm not wearing a bra. You understand people? I'm not going to put on that extra piece of clothing for two seconds. And no, so they probably think that I'm all like, wow, she's really cold. It's like 97 degrees here. Man. I don't care. But you win at the end cause you're comfortable and they're probably not. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly right. Oh, how does the person you are today compare to the person you were five years ago? Okay, that's a very good question. Because my daughter turns five. Her name is Ozell. I'm Glozell. She turns five, August 4th. So five years ago today, I'm a completely different person because I have to definitely think about someone else. So that is huge where you're like, I don't mind eating cinnamon. I don't mind jumping off of this. I don't mind putting salt and ice on my arm. And I'm like, well, I kind of need to live. 
You know, even though about five years ago, I went down this fireman's pole and broke my leg and everything. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I, I got to do, you know, I don't mind being the daredevil, but now I'm like, I got to think like what happens to me. So I'm completely different. I, I would say that I'm more cautious. That 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 is true. What are some things that you learned from being a mother? Some of the things that I've learned from being a mother is that one, um, I learned to be more patient because you know you have to be. It's not like, okay, get up, let's go and do this. You know, you're helping someone learn uh, you know, how to how to live and be independent. And also I'm learning from her also. You know, to listen. And it's been a great relationship. So uh, something else that I learned, like don't eat all the leftovers because you're just gonna gain so much weight, you know? Because it's like you didn't finish this, you know, this chicken nugget, this this and that, and I'm finishing up like that. Especially during COVID when we're not going too many places, like that doesn't work. Um, I also learned that you know you don't have to do a whole lot of things, you know, to have a good time. You could have some popcorn, watch a good movie, and that's that because I, I run my daughter to dance class to school to swim class and I'm like yay we're going to this and she's like I just want to spend time with you I'm like oh, I spent so much I'm thinking I'm doing such a great job so I'm like, I'm like okay slow down you know okay at the end of the day she's gonna be like all these dance classes which it which is great and wonderful and she loves but she's still you know, just chilling with mom is good. I'm like, okay, well, she wants to do it. So I learned that. Less is more sometimes. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And how do you see yourself five years into the future? I see myself five years into the future, about 30 pounds smaller or more. I see myself with more kids. Hopefully, Lord, I, I'm looking at my uh, lipstick is coming up. Okay. Um, I see myself with a uh, better lipstick on. Um, I definitely see myself pretty much on a regular series. Hopefully something funny. I'd like to be on a comedy, something easy. Maybe it's voiceover, something light so I can still have time, something I can do at home works or something very close. So some kind of professional thing outside of the internet only, outside of YouTube. And, you know, just happily married with my daughter and twin boys and I'm having fun, still enjoying life. You, you heard it here for, first. So five years from now, you'd be like, oh, my goodness, she is married, happily married with, you know, more kids with these twins, she said, you know, and traveling and having a good time. You know, especially since all this COVID, you know, you realize like, wow, what is important? you know, enjoy your life, you know, so uh, God is good, and God has kept me this far, and I'm gonna, and that's what I'm gonna be doing five years from now, with my dog, with my Spencer dog. <laughs> yeah, Spencer, you're Habanese, or Shih Tzu. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned that, you know, you'd want to be on a show. Are there any shows going on right now that you wish you'd be a part of? Oh, are there any shows going on right now that I wish I was a part of? I like so many kind of sitcom family things from let's see from blackish to mom all these shows they're kind of going out now but things like that that involved a whole family unit kind of a thing you know it functional or dysfunctional they're showing that that's on the lighter side of things not like oh death and suicide like there's enough tragedy going on in the world but on the lighter Light of scope Great. of things. Mm -hmm. You know, I could totally imagine you on the reboot of iCarly. Ah! Oh, I'm See, gonna like I that is perfect. <laughs> that would be perfect. You know, Nickelodeon, Disney, that that is where I would be great. You know, because I definitely feel like I'm a person that like to be around kids. Mm -hmm. Such feel good and wholesome content. I love yes, the kid shows. that part. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Something so, my mama and my and my my pastor could watch at the same time, you know, like not, <laughs> you know. So I'm sure you've done so much, like you were on the internet for so many years and I'm sure you've learned a lot through all these years. So what principles do you live your life by? 
principles that I enjoy to live my life by, especially been on the internet, is like, you better think before you post anything, you know? And I usually, for the most part, I don't, you know, I don't post anything that I feel like anybody's going to be upset by, even though, you know, I don't care what you do. If I say like, I don't really like this wig. Why you don't like that wig? You know, somebody always want to argue something, but uh, I, I post things that are feel good. You know, that's what I like to post. It's, it's funny. It's not this. My thing is like, I did this thing on the Kardashians. I want the Kardashians to watch and go, oh, I want to be on that. Not like, oh, she talked about it. Like, I don't do mean-spirited things. So I, I would say always post fun, informative things. That's that's my thing. That's that's my lane. I'm not trying to uh, convince anybody of a, any kind of, it, like, Republicans or Democrats or this religion or that. Or, I just want, we, I just want to play. And let's have a good time. Yeah. It's all light and fun. That, well, that's have fun and enjoy life and laugh. Yes. Laugh a little. Yes, yes, yes. We yeah. are dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that's something I actually miss from, like, old YouTube. Like, I mean, there were certain aspects of it, you know, that could have been. But basically, like, with old YouTube, there was so much more, like, feel-good and funny content. I feel like today, like, YouTube is so dominated with, like, tea channels and all that kind of and stuff. drama. <laughs> yeah. So much drama. <laughs> right. Because now people are like, wait, um, I'm going to be a YouTuber just to make money. And I got to, you know, outdo, you know this person and not that person and you know if you did cinnamon then i i need to jump off a roof and then you know like oh my gosh he doesn't like me and this is what i did and i don't like heart like everyone's trying to do their own soap opera or something where we were just like look <laughs> so dramatic yeah so dramatic <laughs> but but you mentioned something important you said like you were cautious of what you posted you just wanted to post yes. things to have fun and you tried not yes. to lean towards political or religious views right. what are your views on cancel culture because i feel like that's something that's been so rampant these days with so many influencers out there my view on cancel culture oh my goodness it's really hard because i'm coming from a stand-up background so i don't know how anybody can do stand-up comedy so it like you can't say anything you know what because someone can say something that's rude and vulgar and I'll be like okay well that's their joke you know that's not my type of comedy but now it's like you were rude and vulgar your life is over do you understand you will not be on the stage anymore we will protest we will end this do you understand? so that is dramatic you know, even if it's somebody like, I don't like you, but if somebody want to pay tickets to go see you, they should be allowed to do that. So cancel culture is very interesting because you're going to end up canceling people that you don't, you know, that you wish you didn't, you know, that can't come back, you know, from whatever the incident was. So, or you, so I, I wonder if it's going to stay or if it goes, you know, because right now then it's, Nobody can say anything, not a singer, not, not even political people, you know, if you say anything about vaccines or not vaccine, like, ah, you could be canceled. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. So, it's anything, really. Anything that you anything. say. Anything. We have find- to toughen up again, you know. Now, you can't just be so, so, you know, there's extremes, but, like, people get this little power, like, what you said you don't like green lipstick (sighs) you know i will shut your life down no one's going to your bakery no one's going to your school no one's going to you know anything like you know so i i think we're gonna have to find a happy medium or something not quite cancel everything i agree and i think what everyone can just use is a good laugh and just smile that's all that's it that's it we have full lipstick, though. <laughs> green lipstick. <laughs> we just came on with green lipstick today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. So like. I, oh, sorry. What were you saying? No, I'm just saying I'm so you you all are so lovely and delightful. Thank you so much for reaching out. You know, I'm always so excited when, especially, um, I I don't know if you consider yourself up and coming, but you know, that you're like, hey, Glozell, that I'm still remembered, I'm still here. And, you know, I'm Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Oh, I haven't got on this Twitch thing. I'm like, what? What is that? You know, 
<laughs> YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Periscope is gone. Kink is gone. Vine is gone. Mm. There's there's so many other Snapchat. I don't know what people do there. Yeah, social yeah. media comes and goes so it's fast. always changing. Like, YouTube was so big, and all of a sudden TikTok became super big. Like, and well, what? before TikTok, it was. Musically, was, right? Yes, musically. Yes. Before that, we had Vine. Vine was the best thing out there, in my opinion. It was so Vine was so huge. Raw. I was like, oh my goodness. And then, it's gone. Gone. See. gone. So I'm like, you guys, don't put everything all in one basket, especially when they, they, they come and go, they come and go. And there was, there was other things too, you know, but anyway. And if you're having fun, you have a good time, you know, and you you own your your content, you can go anywhere. And um, if you're creative and you're not taking from other people, you know, then you can create anywhere. So it doesn't it, that doesn't, doesn't matter. matter what platform it is. They right. can't take away your brain and your creativity. Hello, that part. <laughs> All right. So speaking of thankful, being thankful for things, what would you say you're grateful for in your life? Okay, definitely. My health, my daughter, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm still here. So many people, I was thinking like, I, it's hard to even get sympathy for people because everybody knows somebody who's gone through something serious this year or in the last two years, you know? So I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful to be in my right mind. You know, I'm thankful that, um, cause they, it gotten really lean, you know, when everything shut down, I'm like, what am I going to do? So I, I'm thankful for the, the food in the refrigerator, you know, I'm thankful that the lights are on, the air conditioning. There was a time like, huh, I wonder how that's going to get paid, you know? So I, I'm thankful for what you call the basics. And I'm also thankful for the question, like the question you asked five years from now, that I'm thankful already in advance for that show that's coming, that voiceover um, contract that's coming. The other children that's coming, the happy marriage that's coming. So I, I'm I'm thankful for now and tomorrow. I love that. We should be thankful for what's coming. That's such a yes. strong statement that you just Thank said. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, Glozel, so we're up to the part of the show where we get our um, title from, and it's the hardest question on the show. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So if you were to leave something in a time capsule for people to dig up 100 years later, what would you put in there and why? Of course, if I had to leave something in a time capsule, guess what it's going to be? Some green lipstick. I knew it. Would... Yes. We should have made a bet on this. <laughs> yes, you see the green lipstick, going to be like, that was Glozelle. Yes, um, I have the most iconic lips, you know, recognizable lips in all the world. You know? Keep... <laughs> For sure. Like, when I, like whenever I've seen multicolored lipsticks, even in other shows, like... Whenever I see green, it's like, oh, that was glows out. Right, right. So definitely that. If I had to leave one thing, it would be that. And you you wouldn't even have to put a name on it. You'd be like, oh, green lipstick. Glows out. Even if you type in, like, green lipstick, I, I'm going to come up, you know. Green lips, you know, so. <laughs> have you ever, like, thought about making your own, like, makeup brand for just green lipstick? I do want to do that with other colors, but definitely based off, you know, bright, boldness. And uh, that's that's good. That's gonna be in the future, okay? That's gonna be within those five years, okay? okay. Well, add that to that. Years and see what's <laughs> up. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, that would be amazing. Glozell Cosmetic. Glozell Green. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so that would be some amazing stuff. <laughs> hey, thank you. And then I have to be back. I hopefully be back before five years. You know, we'll you, you guys will be in the television. You know, y'all y'all moved out out of the what doesn't look like a closet closet out of, you our, know? Out of our closet <laughs> yes, yeah. in our parents home <laughs> right right i'll be coming to the mansion i'm like okay <laughs> all right so do you have any final words of advice for people out there especially i guess budding youtubers or budding like you know content creators. tiktokers yeah even well, yes i would say for all you budding tiktokers youtubers you know instagram um, have fun and don't, you know, don't do it at somebody else's expense. You know, it's easy to pick and talk about somebody else, but that is not nice. You have all these bullies and all, and once you put it out there, it's out there and you're finding out people are canceling people from things they did 10 years ago, you know, <laughs> five years ago, they have changed. They've become a different person, but now they found that tweet, that thing that they said, 
you know. So really think about what you're putting out there and just in, enjoy yourself. Make it fun. You know, if religion is your thing, fine. Stay in your lane, political, fine, whatever. But for the most part, you know, because that's just not mine. That I mean, that you don't have to hurt anybody else. You don't have to put anybody else down, you know. Enjoy. That is my advice. And be consistent, you know. People, you find your audience when you find that you, you continue to keep going. Also, you know, it, you know, find other people to be on your, you know, be on the podcast, you know, like I'll do podcasts if somebody have a million uh, followers and I do a podcast and like, oh, I just started. Would you be my first guest? So be open to things because you never know. You never know who's going to be the one to be like, oh, I remember Glosa, she did my podcast when I did. I had one person and now I'm, you know, hosting the Oscars. I want her to be a part of it. You, know, you just never know. Just be nice to everybody. And plus, so much, so many things is going on. Everybody, a lot of people have a short fuse. Don't be the one to set them off. Be the one to make them go, oh, life is good. There are some great people out there. <laughs> That's what I want when people come to my channel when they see me. Like, oh, she's so silly. She's so fun. Yeah. Ah, you know, you're not, you're not thinking about anything else. Okay. You know, going back on that point where it was like people just kind of like, you never know what's going to happen with people. Like I've seen like some, like, for example, I remember there was that chef, I think Nick DiGiovanni, I was following him when he had around like 10,000 subscribers and he got on TikTok out of nowhere. The guy now has like a couple months later, millions of like subscribers. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, whoa, that's crazy. Like, like you, said, you never know. You never know. It, you know, like you don't know which one is going to go viral. Somebody can have one hit. Like you're going to catch me outside. How about that? Then that chick is on tour. You know, I'm like. Yeah. She's a whole career now. Oh, you're just like, what? So you don't know. You just don't know. <laughs> you know? That's true. All right. So pretty much everyone like, you know, knows like GLO, Z-E-L-L, Glozell. But where, where are the best channels for people to follow up on your latest content? Thank you. That you can follow me on YouTube, Glozell on YouTube, all things social media. You Glozell on TikTok, Glozell on Instagram, Glozell on Facebook, and Glozell on Twitter. Thank you so much. Awesome. So Glozell, thank you so much for being a part of our time capsule. And thank Yay. you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Tune in again next time to meet another amazing addition to our time capsule. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Spencer. Roo, roo, roo. Oh. <laughs> Over and out. Bye.